Hello everyone, this is your host, Cam. Nice of you all to make it out again and uh, join us for another episode of CamCast with your host, Cam. How's everybody doing? Hope you're all having a wonderful day and a wonderful evening. And uh, without further ado, we're going to get into it today. It's going to be something I like to call an open discussion where we talk about various topics, mainly dealing with the world, and other things too. More exciting, fun things. Well, at least I find them fun. And maybe someday you will too, if not already, of course. And for those of you that already do, well, here's a fun conversation you can enjoy. So, I'm gonna begin this by, of course, introducing what I have on for those that are interested I have on kind of a mixed duo right now it's a uh, a charcoal blazer with a royal blue pattern that's pretty slim Um, well it's a window pane pattern followed by a black polo shirt I have on gray trousers which are commonly known as dress slacks but formerly known as trousers with a light blue and royal blue window pane pattern and I have on some black socks with white polka dots and some dark brown Oxford dress shoes I'll begin to kick it back up a notch of course next episode but Thought I'd introduce that. So without further ado, today, of course, there has been a lot of things that have been circulating around, and I don't really want to get into anything too specific. We're just going to basically talk more in general. And uh, mainly, I guess this next topic will be more about theories. You know, theories are interesting work of art. They're things that we read about, talk about, hear about, laugh about at times, and are usually curious about. There are many theories out there about many things dealing with the human race, and just even ones that are out there associated with divisions of the human race. And theories are things that basically they can be very influencing they can be very persuasive and there was another word I was looking for but we're gonna go with persuasive for now they can persuade people to do a lot of things they can enter thoughts into the minds control people in uh, many different ways and certain outcomes result from that that can sometimes either be beneficial or the complete opposite detrimental for many individuals this could be whether it be humans animals or just the environment itself and um Growing up, we're all taught different things. I actually can recall some arguments I might have had with a few older adults about some things I might have learned in school that put a certain opinion in my mind. And to this day, I still don't find that opinion necessarily incorrect. However, there are other sides of it that can be entertained. So, if anybody else would like to entertain that, or, of course, just let that circulate through your minds. And, um, yeah, so, there have also, like I said before, I'm sure in previous episodes, possibly that we all have tasks in this world as... We are given our individual brains to basically 
sort through and question different things that we may have questions about certain topics that are certain things that people may tell us and just question their validity and their accuracy and basically um, just see what we think about them ourselves in my opinion and see what we come up with because everything everybody you know everybody has their own opinion so I mean we can't just take everybody's and make it ours and say okay well hey this is how I feel because this group of people feel this way and I know I'm getting a little political about it like I say everybody has their own political and religious views however where it comes into concern is when those views are taken into action and especially if it may be against others validity here it basically states that it is the quality of being logically or factually sound soundness or cogency or cogency the state of being legally or officially binding or acceptable that is the official definition of validity just to make sure we're all on the same page Yep, and accuracy is the quality or state of being correct or precise. Technical definition would include the degree to which the result of a measurement, calculation, or specification conforms to the correct value or standard. So we got to think about those things, everybody, especially whenever, you know, We really want to, I guess, develop strong feelings and strong opinions about things that we might feel a certain way about and just see where things line up. I'm not here necessarily condemning anything specifically that may have taken place. However, we just have to do better as one. And I'm sure that if not all, most of us that are listening to this can definitely agree with that statement if not well I mean I guess you might be the influencer of the next and that's not necessarily stating that it's just well I mean if you have an alternate way of looking at it then I'm curious as to what that is and where that originates from or the foundation of it which actually leads me to my next point that we're going to discuss possible foundations possible foundations can of course you know from the start we can we could talk about childhoods we could talk about just where any of the things might derive from you know of course I'm not making this about parenting, but whenever you simply come out or you have an offspring from the time that you lay eyes or hold that offspring until it's time for them to leave the nest and make begin to make their own decisions. It doesn't matter really what older adults or guardians are involved, our teachers, anybody in the educational uh, background are involved in those offspring's lives, overall, it's going to be the parents that they mainly look up to. And basically, you know how they say you basically get, what do they call it, semester grades, uh, midterm grades, progress reports basically all throughout these years until they're ready to go off on their own the decisions that they make and the individuals that they are as you're watching them grow older those are the grades you'll receive for that and of course your overall grade will come from the people that they turn out to be 
whenever it is time for them to make those decisions. With, of course, now I'm learning today, that could be many ages. We know the common age that normally happens, but it, it's really many ages. It can vary, especially in today's society. So, but the thing about that is, is that sometimes you have to ask yourself, are you prepared to handle that responsibility? And I've had the pleasure of actually speaking with a few and some of them say with the pressures of a social environments today, it is probably more difficult than what it was back whenever they were growing up. And I found that fascinating to, to hear. And I said, okay, yeah, I can understand that. Um, it's very understandable. Today, the young individuals are exposed to a lot of different things. And it's almost really, I wouldn't say out of control, but it's really no way for control to really take place. And it's just, it's different than what most people who are parents than the way that they experienced things as they were growing older. And it's something they do not recognize and it may be hard to govern their offspring through the social pressures and social society that they may face as soon as they walk out that door. And then when they return home, you may have no idea where any of the things that are on their minds originate from. Therefore, you are about as confused as maybe they might become as they get older. You can nod your head if you agree, or if anything just resonated, or if I, you just learned something new. You know, life is about challenges. Whichever way you choose to accept that challenge is, or, you know, everybody likes challenges, honestly. Even if you are one who says you do not like to be challenged at all, Somewhere in your mind, you enjoy challenges. You may not realize it, but everyone enjoys challenges. And if you really don't enjoy challenges, if I were you, I may not voice that to anyone, but everyone enjoys challenges. And today, that is a major challenge that we all face. This is a discussion I was having with some re one recently about the different challenges that different people may choose to take in life. And I just, we actually kind of compared it to sports a little bit, basically saying, well, I mean, think about it, you know? I find it found it interesting to learn about the sport of golf and compare it with sports of football and basketball. And we're talking professionally, by the way. It can honestly, you can talk any level, but more so professionally. And as I researched some famous golfers and then researched, of course, what I know, knew already famous NFL players and, bath and NBA players. And I just thought it was interesting how, wow, okay, so this guy here made this amount and he is worth this amount. And I'm not saying it's about money. It's not all about money. It's just, I just thought it was interesting that that this amount is earned for the amount of work that they put in for this. Whereas, you know, sometimes when you're watching an NFL game or an NBA game, they may show you to like advertise like a some sports drink in a sense, like a commercial to advertise that or just in general. You know, they'll show you all the, you know, trainings and combines and the rigorous amount of tra work that these athletes have to do and you see the type of competition and challenges that they have to face to both get a chance to be on the field or on the court or make the team before you can talk about even getting on the court and then on top of that when they're in exhibition and then you see the outcomes of just what's earned from that and I just I just said wow so this comes from this and this comes from this and I'm thinking well 
that's interesting. I guess people find challenges in different ways. So there can be more said about that, but we'll do that in a later or another episode down the line. Anyways, and no disrespect to any of the people that play either sport or, of course, any of that. I just found it interesting to actually look into. So, in addition to that, let's talk about positivity. I've actually decided to make some additional style changes that, in my opinion, promote a sense of positivity. In my opinion, they do. And I'm not saying it has to be shown through, you know, I'm not saying it has to be shown through clothing. That's just my medium. You know, I like to basically dabble with the arts of fashion pretty much just about every day. And normally it looks pretty great. But with that being said, you know, we all, in a way, um, especially those who probably don't already, we all have a way in which we can inspire positivity into this world. We can. And it can start with the smallest things. We don't have to talk about social organizations or going out and saying hello to everybody you see. That would be a great idea to greet just about everybody you see, especially those who are older than you. You never know who might be going through what in a situation. So, you know, we all go through things at times in this world. We're all trying to still understand this world. And in a sense, you know, sometimes somebody might meet a simple, you know, hello. Verbally, honestly, if you think about it, by greeting somebody, sometimes could be considered basically a virtu- a a verbal hug. So, I mean, I'm not saying that if you see a relative you don't particularly like or whatever, and you say hello and say, well, hey, I already gave you a hug by saying that. I'm not necessarily saying that. This is more so for those that we're unfamiliar with and do not personally know. A hello can really spark someone's day. I would know. I've tried it before. Well, I'm not going to say I've tried it. I speak to people all the time. But I'm saying that I spoke to someone that I might have seen a few times, never had the opportunity to speak with, and I said it. And it honestly brightened the person's day. And, you know, sometimes we get to those positions in our days to where we really feel like all has just fall into pieces and we have no idea where to even start when it comes to picking those pieces up and putting them back together because it seems like nobody wants to see them together. Am I striking any chords? Anybody can relate. So, I mean, sometimes it's great for people to know that they're not necessarily alone and that Somebody else wants to see change as well and see positivity instead of just, I'm not even talking about seeing negativity on the news, just in general. Now, some people may simply say, well, can you define negativity? What do you, what do you categorize negativity at? Negativity can honestly be stated in many words. I mean, what in many ways? Matter of fact, that's a good point. Negativity is defined as the expression of criticism or of pessimism about something. So basically that, you'd be surprised you actually have a lot of negative people that wouldn't necessarily be defined as negative people. They just are used to just negative things or 
they might have decided to just give up on a few things, which may have turned them negative. But all is well. And we just have to keep reminding them, well, I mean, you know, negativity doesn't really have to exist. You know, there is room for positivity in a sense. And we just have to share it. I mean, you know how they say two wrongs don't make a right? Well, I mean, if everybody's negative, then of course the sun probably won't shine until somebody decides to make it shine. Am I right? So one thing that I know I enjoy doing to spread positivity would probably be incorporating a few bow ties into my wardrobe every now and then. And I've spoken about this before, but sometimes they do, you know, catch a few smiles. And I'm not talking of interest, I'm just saying, like, nowadays you rarely even see ties, you know, people wearing them. It's because, well, I, I can't tell you the actual reason why. I don't personally know too many people. Well, I guess I do know them, but I don't know their reasoning for not wearing the ties, but, you know, that's just something I know I ra rarely see. And individuals do appreciate that, honestly. So keep that in mind, too. So, yeah, let's keep up the awareness for need for positivity. A lot of people... People want things to be positive about. They want things to smile about. It's just in human nature. Many people may show you that they don't want anything to smile about and that's it. But that's probably just deriving from a long time of negativity and disappointment and all those sorts of types of things which life can bring you if you allow it. This could also just go by the way we carry ourselves and walk every single day. People are watching. Does it mean we necessarily have to care? Not really. Especially not if you're walking in a positive light. Let them look and watch. They might earn, they might gain something from that. All it takes is one person. Keep that in mind. And without further ado, um, I'm going to go ahead and get back into um, my clothing topic. So, like I was saying, I'm kind of wearing like a, a mixed suit. I tend to do that a lot. I don't really, I'd say I, I probably wear mixed suits more than I wear the full suit. And when I say mixed suits, I'm talking like different color blazers with different color uh, pairs of pants, in a sense. I just like it more, and then I'll pair a tie with it, and then some matching dress shoes and socks to go with it. Normally, it is known that you would, if you're going to do something like that, you should put a sport coat with a pair of trousers. However, I'm not the biggest person on sport coats, even though I do wear them. However, I still like the feel of the blazer or suit jacket, whichever you prefer. I just call it really suit jacket. Sometimes it's a little too long to me. And if I'm trying to get a point across quickly, I'll just stick with blazer. So yeah, it's pretty much how that works. In addition to that, I have finished my master's degree program and now I am a master's degree recipient. So array for me and um, my master's degree is of course in education and we're going to continue to move forward and uh, yeah I'm very proud of that I'm proud of myself um, I graduated with honors and I'm happy about it so something that can't be taken away from me and I'll continue to push on and s spread the cheer and joy and something else. 
Right, I recently, I introduced a topic a while back about two dress shirts in which I decided to compare to one another. And one was actually from Macy's and the other, the new one that I was telling you all about was from Dillard's. And I tested the both of them together and they honestly, they're both great. I think that eventually the stronger one is the one from Dillard's, of course. Some may be like, well, yeah, duh. Like, well, but I mean, it really kind of just depends on your preference and which one fits you better. I like the pockets that come on dress shirts. I like the crispness. I'm kind of starting to get into starch a little more. It's something that basically sharpens the dress shirt in a sense. And I just like them both. I tend to rotate the both of them. And I plan to get some more eventually in the future because I actually have a greater need for them rather than probably any other clothing garment that I own. Now that I think about it, so more of them will be coming in. And I'm also beginning something a little new too, and that is gonna be with cufflinks. So what this means that probably would just mainly be purchasing whenever I get the opportunity to, you have to get French cuffs or dress shirts with French cuffs. When I first when I first found out about cufflinks, I was very excited because I thought that just meant tightening up the wrists on my current dress shirts until I found out that mm, not exactly you actually need is a specialized shirt for that. My interest sank slightly after learning that, but I said, okay, well, let's give it a try. And tried it, wasn't as enthusiastic at first as I thought I would be, but over time, and I guess it comes with growth, I'm beginning to like them again. And I think they just look elegant. I haven't really found anything about what they represent to be something that makes them completely necessary. I think it kind of represents more of a level of maturity, if anything, based off a show I've been watching, the ones that do wear them as opposed to the ones that don't. So I'm going to keep you posted on that. But yeah, I tried them side by side and, you know, I noticed the differences and one just made me feel a little bit more firm than the other. But the other one, of course, if you just have a day where you want to relax a little bit, you know, you can pop that one on too. So, yeah, if y'all want to check those out, you can. They're both white dress shirts and um, go for it. I highly recommend the both of them. And actually, I I have, I in the one from Macy's, I have it in French cuffs. But the one from Dillard's, I am currently awaiting one in French cuffs. That's on the way. It's not necessarily here yet, but I would say, yeah, try both in a sense. And just see which one you like. I think I'm inching closer to a particular one over the other one. But then again, that may not, not happen. And I don't. I don't plan to actually just toss one away and just do the other. I don't really plan to do that. I might just make a certain decision based off the ones that I get in the future. So that's pretty much how that's going to work. And um, I'll just continue to let y'all know. And I'm going to go ahead and conclude today's episode. Went a little longer than I expected, but that's fine. Had a lot to say. We had a lot of fun with this open discussion. Might have learned some things, this and that, and um, could let those things marinate until next episode. And um, once again, this is your host, Cam, and I will see you next time on CamCast. Y'all enjoy your evening.